not uh, joking here. It's yeah, good. yeah. He pulled this. He pulled the arm, and uh, they attached the arm after that to the boy, and and they also get the get him his arc his his arm back in the hospital. Do you see how absurd <laughs> this <laughs> this story is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a very <laughs> strange. <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I said to Noah last time. I said they should have just, you know, let the shark. Why, why did they do that? Yeah, and they shot the poor. <laughs> shark. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very absurd. Uh, it was it, that I think the story is so the story is so strange. I actually googled it. And I did find it. It seems that it actually happened, but uh, the pages, uh, the ones I found on Google, you know, they're, they're, they're small bits and pieces from, I think, from different news reports. I couldn't find like an official full story. I think it needs to, I need to search it a little, um, a little more, maybe search it a bit better, but it, it does, it's not science fiction. It actually happened. Which yeah. is so weird, where, you know, a guy just pulled, and the thing we were debating, Noah and I, was w whether he shot the shark before he pulled him, or pulled him and then shot him, but I think uh, he pulled this one, uh, if you check this sentence, it, it seems, and this is what Noah said last time, that uh, um, here, never estimate <clears throat> a man's strength when a family life's in danger. So he actually, it seems that he, he pulled... Pulled him. Yeah, he pulled him onto the beach, which is sort of weird. Yeah, yeah uh, all the parts was personal. Till you reach this point. Yeah, he managed to catch the 90 kilo shark. I mean, yeah. how, how did he catch him? That, that's a problem, catching the shark and then pulling it and then shooting it. You, you know, so many, so many illogical steps, but the, this is, this is the story, I guess, and uh, we'll have to deal with it. I think, I think the context of the story, what was the context of this uh, lesson? Let's, let's, let me check the headline, uh, dangerous at sea. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so we talked about this, um, this story, and, but we didn't do the, the, the vocab exercise yet. Um, so here, if you remember, Brian, remember the lesson when we talked about uh, suffixes, the ending of words, and how the ending of words uh, changes them from nouns to adjectives, if you remember, like uh, successful, successfully, no, successfully is the, the adverb, but success, successful. Health healthy. Uh, again, uh -huh. Health healthy. Yeah, health healthy, for example. Do you remember that lesson, Brian? Hey, hey, suffix or prefix. Yeah, today it's prefixes. It's, uh, I think the focus is uh, prefix. We're going to talk, um, but there's also suffixes, I think. Ah, suffixes in the pink. Is it in the yeah. pink? Yeah, it's uh, prefixes and uh, suffixes. Ah, yeah, it's, it's a two in one, both of them together. Yeah. yeah. All right, nice, nice. All right, so, uh, so let's talk a little bit about this. So let's check number six, exercise six. It says, uh, look at the words in blue in the article, underline the prefixes, then fill in the gaps with this rule. Okay, so let's take a look at all the blue words we have in the article. So we have uh, unconscious, uh, disappeared, impossible, uh, incorrect, unusual, uncommon, uncommon, and the last one is irresponsible. Mm. All right, so we have a, a bunch of blue words. All of them have prefixes. Uh, I think that's the question they're asking. We often use the prefixes uh, un, this. Mm, what other prefixes uh -huh. do? I am, right? Im with uh, impossible. Yeah. Uh, uh, I R R. I R R. Yeah, for like irresponsible. Responsible. And what what other ones do we have? I N. I N. There's also I N. I M. I N and I R. That's correct. Yes. Let's write them. So we use the prefixes uh, U N, un, D I S, this. We also use M, like impossible. We also use in, like incorrect. And we also use R or I R, like irresponsible. 
right? So all these prefixes, we use them to just, uh, you know, to denote the, the opposite. That's basically what we, we use them for. This is the idea, all right? So I think this is fairly um, obvious, it's clear. Now, part B is the, is the more interesting part here. In part B, they want us to decide which is the correct uh, prefix to use for each uh, adjective, right? So let's let's do that. Let's start with the first one, believable. Unbelievable. Correct. Okay. Patient. Mm. Uh, What's the opposite of patient? Impatient. M. 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 Correct. Correct. Uh, selfish. Mm. What do you think? Un. Un. Mm, I think it's un unselfish. Yeah. Honest. Just dishonest. Okay. Considerate. In. In. Considerate. Un. un or in? What do you think? In. In. Okay. What about polite? M. M. Organized. Un. Un. Brain. What do you think? Is it un? Or do you think it's another one? Okay, what, what about regular? Be nice. Maybe this, mm. what about regular? Uh, unregular. Mm, what do you think now, regular? Irregular. Irregular, mm. like irregular verbs, right? Yeah. What about reliable? Uh, un yeah. Unreliable. Mm, loyal? Mm. Disloyal. Oh, no, no. Maybe, maybe, not, maybe that's correct, Brian. Uh, disloyal, maybe. Mm. What about mature? Immature. Immature. Mm. Ambitious? Uh, un. <coughs> mm, unambitious, maybe. Mm. Formal? Informal. Informal, okay. Similar? This. This similar, okay. Sensitive? Insensitive. Insensitive. Helpful? Unhelpful. Unhelpful. What, what about helpless? Helpless. Helpless. Mm -hmm. uh, helpless. But you can't do it with full. No, I changed uh, helpful. I changed it into helpless. It, it, doesn't that consider it an opposite? No, the same. Unhelpful. Helpless. Nesta. Nesta. Hmm. Okay. Here, I think there's an interesting point here to make. So we have we have helpful. But we have unhelpful and we have helpless. Helpless uh, synonymly unhelp. Uh, yeah, the opposite. Nah, nah. Uh, helpless, the opposite of uh, helpful. The opposite of uh, helpful, eh? Helpful, eh? The opposite of uh, unhelpful? No, I don't think unhelpful. I think it's helpless. Mm. All right, okay. Let, let's go to the summary. I think, the, I think we'll find some interesting points here. Let's check them. Uh, where is it? Mm, quantifiers, health, 145. I'm looking for, ah, oh, this is 147. Uh-huh, here it is. Uh, can you see that? Yeah. Okay, prefixes and opposites. So we're focusing on opposites here. So let's check the UN group, the UN. Mm -hmm. So we say, uh, we say unconscious, unusual, uncommon, unbelievable. Uh, here, I think they have uh, a mixed, mixed list, not all, more than the ones we had, right? Mm -hmm. Because because we did unbelievable, 
we did unselfish, we did unreliable, uh, also unambitious, and you can see unhelpful, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then we have the this group, we have uh, the ones we had is this dishonest, and Ibrahim said disloyal, which is correct, and Nuha said dissimilar, which is also correct. Uh, then we have the M group. I think we had impatient and immature only in our, in our exercise. Within, I think we had inconsiderate, informal. Did we have insensitive? I think we did, right? Can't remember. Sensitive. Insensitive. Uh, yes. We, did we have them in the exercise? Did we have a sensitive? Since, yeah, insensitive, the, the, the last line. Uh -huh, okay, so we answered this first. And we also had irregular. These are the ones we had in our exercise. Yeah. So here it says tips. We can use these prefixes to make opposites uh, of adjectives and also verbs. In some situations, even verbs, we can also make them to opposites. Right, like do and do. Hmm? Yeah. To me, Allah. Yeah, yeah, we can do it. Undo. You can even see it in uh, Microsoft Word. I think if you put, if you could, if you press Control Z, this is undo. Hey. Anything you do on on Microsoft oh, wow. Word or Paint or, uh, for example, here, even here in my in Zoom, if I, for example, if I do this on the page and then I just press. Control Z, this is undo, you know, it, it mm -hmm. takes you back one step, undo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, disappear also, right? He disappeared. So this is a, this is a yeah. verb. I think maybe this is a common verb actually. Where is Michael? He disappeared. So so in some situations we can we can even use these prefixes. We can use them for uh, for verbs, for some verbs. Uh, lock. This is another common example now, right? Lock, unlock, lock, unlock. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, surprised at uh, the point with do, that's it. That's uh -huh. it. Oh. Yeah, with do, yeah, do, undo. Yeah, so you should undo the harm or undo whatever. So sometimes you use like, a... we have a little tip here. Uh, they're not exactly, you know, rules, rules, but uh, it seems that these are good uh, rules of, have you heard of the expression rules of thumb? A rule of thumb, have you heard of this expression, rule of thumb? Mm, let me write it here. A rule of thumb. No. A rule of thumb. A rule of thumb means, you know, it's not, it's not a rule written in stone to get the idea. Maybe there are some exceptions. It's like a rule of thumb is always like a, a rough guide. It's it's help it's helpful, but don't think of it too much in a way. You get the idea. It's yeah. just it's yeah. just a guide. Don't I, rely on it. Don't rely on it one hundred percent. Use it, but there might be exceptions for this rule. So mm -hmm. it's it's a you know it's a general rule. Uh, I think the last two points. They, they're a bit like this. It says adjectives beginning with P, with the letter P, they tend to take the prefix M. It's, it's common. Yeah. Impatient, impossible. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. Impatient, impossible. It's more common. Uh, there might be exceptions, but it says they usually, they usually take M. The same thing with the ones that uh, start with R, right? So if you have an adjective starting with R, it's very likely it will st the prefix is ir, responsible, mm -hmm. irresponsible, regular, irregular, and so on. All right. So yeah. uh, that's all here. There's nothing new, nothing else, I think. Um, let's see. The other one, the other points are with the next exercise, not this one. Uh, okay. Sorry, I forgot the page. Which page were we in, in the book? Can you see which page now? 68? 67. 67. 67. Okay. All right. So, uh, so we did the first one, and we checked some of our answers. So here, actually, helpful. This is a trick question. Helpful and unhelpful and uh, helpless are a bit different, actually. 
because helpless in a way is is an opposite of helpful, but it's a different opposite opposite from unhelpful. So if you want to describe someone as uh, as helpful, it means in a way uh, reliable, right? In a, in a mm -hmm. kind in a kind of way, it means this person. Mm -hmm. If you are stuck with something, you can depend on him or her to help you. Okay. And uh, unhelpful is someone who probably doesn't want to help you. Maybe they can, but they don't want to. Unhelpful, you know, it's not good to have an unhelpful friend, right? Uh, What's the point? This is unhelpful. Helpless is like a baby. Or, you know, a baby is helpless. Yeah, a baby is helpless. Exactly, that's the point. A helpless person, for example, uh, patients after surgery are helpless. They need 24-7 mm -hmm. uh, care. They need nurses. Sometimes they can't even breathe on their own. They need, you know, equipment and breathing stuff, right? This is helpless. It means they can't even help themselves. Mm. But an unhelpful person probably can help himself and he can probably help you as well, but they, it's very likely that they don't want to. Unhelpful. It's like intentional. Yeah. That's, this, that's the idea. Uh, but of course, in this in exercise B, I think the, the focus was on prefixes, opposite with prefixes. So helpless is it doesn't even follow the rule because I changed the, the suffix when I did yeah. helpless. I didn't change the prefix. Okay, let's move to our to the pink words. Uh, okay, so it says you look at the words in pink, underline uh, the prefixes and the suffixes. Uh -huh. So here in the pink words we have both. I think we have a combination of. Prefixes and suffixes, not just prefixes this time. So let's start with the pink words. So here, the first pink word we have is underestimate. underestimate. Yeah. So where's where's the 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 prefix or the suffix here? What do you think? Uh, prefix. Mm -hmm. What's the prefix in the word underestimate? Under. Under. Right. So under is our prefix here in this word because the 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 original word is estimate, right? This is the original. This is the original verb, estimate. So under is our prefix. What about the next word? Reattach. Reattach. Re, re, r e. This is our prefix. Uh, over optimistic. Bad for slim. Over. Optimistic. Yeah, so it's it's obvious that over is our prefix. What, uh, about, what about hopeful? Do we have a prefix or just a suffix this time? Suffix. Yeah, only a suffix. suffix. So, yeah, we just mm -hmm. have the, the, the full <coughs> suffix. Uh, harmless. Suffix. Again, yeah, we have a suffix. All right. So in this group, it's sort of the, the other way around. We have some of them which are prefixes, some of them are suffixes. Now, I think the question here, they're, they're focusing on meaning. What do these prefixes or, or suffixes mean? What, what is their effect on the original word? So when you have the word like estimate, and then you add the prefix underestimate, what did we do? According to the rule, according to the table here, when we say underestimate, it means not enough. So when you say underestimate, it means you didn't estimate the person enough. Do you get the idea? Yeah. It's, it's a common wisdom. They always, they always say, never underestimate your enemy, right? Yeah. When you underestimate your enemy, you think, eh, he's weak. He'll do nothing to me. This is underestimation and this is dangerous because if you underestimate your, your enemy, maybe he will prepare, maybe he will be ready, maybe he'll be stronger than you think. So this is the idea under, the prefix under is always not enough. Yeah. Um, understaffed, for example, you can say this company is understaffed, underqualified, right? So 
this is this is the sense of the word. <laughs> yeah, it means it's not good enough. This is the idea. Whenever you use under as a prefix with the, with another word, okay. it means not enough. You need more of this. It's not good enough. Okay. Now, uh, now we chose the first meaning. What about R E? And we want to match it with one of these in the box. Reattach. Yeah, with reattach. We add uh, Do something again. Correct. Yes. So reattach or re, the prefix re here. Whenever you want to do something again, we say re. Like redo, repaint, reuse, reuse right? Uh, this, is, this is recycle. Excellent. That's it. That's the idea. Okay. Now, what about over? Uh, over optimistic, uh, too much. Correct. That's the idea. If you use the prefix uh, to, if you use the, sorry, the, the prefix over, you're always doing something more than you should. And it's, it doesn't mean uh, it's, not, it's not a good thing. Um, for example, if someone is uh, overconfident, this is not a good thing. Right? It's not a good thing. Uh, overestimate. Or if you say overestimate. Yeah, it's, it's opposite to underestimate. So it's the opposite. So there's an uh, exaggeration. Correct. And uh, sometimes we can we also say in shops overcharge. You can say, for example, yeah. they overcharged me. They took more money than they needed, than they deserved for this item. So the, the item is 10 dinars, but when I check the bill, they took 12. Why? Why did they take this extra? Why did they overcharge me? There's no reason. So, so over doesn't necessarily mean a good thing. It just means more, more than we want, too much. Okay, what about full? The, 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 the suffix full. Hopeful. So when you say hopeful or colorful or, you know, uh, help, it's a, um, helpful. Adjective, adjective. Okay, we use it for adjectives, you're right. Yeah. You're right, but what's the meaning here? Does it mean with, does it mean without, does it mean too much to do something again? What do you think? Oh. Yeah, Brahim, what do you think? Uh, with, <laughs> with. Hope, uh, full. Correct. With. Yeah, full of hope, yeah. Yeah, so when you say hopeful, this is someone full of hope. If you say beautiful, this is someone full of beauty, right? If you say colorful, this is something full of color, right? Mm -hmm. If you think of it, that's what it means. It's exactly what it means. So, so whenever you have the, the suffix full with an adjective, it means uh, this thing is full of the adjective, full of hope full of uh, color. And of course, when you say less, harmless, it means without harm, without, right? Or helpless, without help. Or for example, uh, what other thing? Useless. When we, say, when we say something is useless, it has no use. It's without use, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so this, uh, so exercise number seven, basically it's fo focusing a little more on the meaning of, of some prefixes and some suffixes. It's not like number six, because in number six, every, every uh, prefix we used, it only indicated an opposite. Loyal, disloyal, opposites. Helpful, unhelpful, opposites. Do you get the idea? But here, mm -hmm. number seven, I think the focus was more on, on the meaning of the prefix itself or the suffix itself. This is, this is the goal of number seven. Okay, now we want to apply this rule. We want to apply the different ways of using prefixes and suffixes. We want to do them with the group of words in this box. So here you can see that uh, all of the words are actually verbs. Mm, sorry, not all of them. Some of them are nouns. Some of them are nouns, but with a prefix or a suffix, they will change. So the idea we want to use under, over, re, full, less. So we want to use these five different prefixes and suffixes. We want to mix between these uh, five prefixes and suffixes. 
And remember that more than one answer is possible. So let's take the word paid. What can we put with it or before it or after it to make a new word? Un unpaid. Uh, correct, you can say unpaid, you can. But I think you're using, uh, you're using the, 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 the prefixes from exercise six. It's correct, there is unpaid. You can say he's an unpaid worker. Mm -hmm. So li like an intern, for example, doctors, mm -hmm. medical students, when they finish, they work as unpaid interns for a year. But, but no, can you use any of these uh, prefixes or, or suffixes, the ones in the table? Mm. Repaid. Repaid. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Brian? Charged. Got the. Uh... Underpaid. Underpaid. Sure, underpaid sounds good. Yeah. Maybe we have yeah. underpaid. It means someone who's not paid enough yeah. for the for the work yeah. he does, right? Can we say overpaid? Mm, maybe. Maybe, maybe that's correct yeah. also. Remember that there's more than one answer here, so it might go both ways. Okay, what about right? What changes can we make to the, to the word right? Rewrite. Rewrite, I think, rewrite. is the most common one because teachers will tell you you have to yeah. rewrite it. If it's not good enough, you need to rewrite it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pain? Painful. Painful? Or painless. Or painless. So if you if you take if you take anesthesia before an operation, your operation will be painless, of course, during the operation. Afterwards, that's another story. But during the operation, at oh, yeah. least during the operation, it's painless. You won't feel a thing, or at least you won't be aware of it because sometimes you will feel pain, but you just won't remember it, which is the same thing. I mean, in, in a way, sleep, sleepless. Correct. That's correct. There's another one we, we can use. I think we can use other words with sleep, other prefixes in. Oversleep. Oversleep, right? If you stay late, if you stay too late and you have an early appointment in the morning, you're going to risk oversleeping, right? Because there's, there's a very big chance you will oversleep. So they also use oversleep. Charge. Recharge. Recharge, very good. You can recharge your phone, correct? What else? Uh, chargeful. Mm, I'm not sure about that. Chargeless. Char what Except about that. what about shops? Sometimes shops will overcharge you, hey. or, or maybe they will undercharge you. Maybe if they're not sure, or maybe if the the, the cashier is a little sleepy, uh, you know, instead of taking ten dinners, he will take five. So maybe without paying attention, he will undercharge no. you. Has this happened to you before? Has a, has a shop or a cashier undercharged you before? Yeah. Yeah, what, what, what do you do usually if, if a cashier undercharges you? I, uh, I remember that I bought oh. uh, some kitchen uh, wares. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I came home, I found a bill uh, the you see it is not uh, uh, there's um, you mean he didn't uh, charge didn't all the, the items yeah i didn't find the item uh -huh. that i i bought in the you uh -huh. so i uh, uh, i went back mm -hmm. to the shop and uh, i paid for it uh -huh. because uh, and uh, it was true. They didn't. Uh, he didn't list the the item, the yeah. one that he sold me. Uh huh. Yeah, this is a classical example of undercharging. They undercharge yeah. you. But uh, do you think it was uh, completely necessary to go back? Yeah. Yeah. Because, this is this uh, is a more mm -hmm. because. Uh, will be kind of uh, still something. Or... But, but I think if you have faith in God, 
you should think of it in the other way around. God wanted you to get to have this gift, right? <laughs> no, it's not gift. Uh, and if you no, think of not. it, it's not. Also, this means maybe this is a form of uh, also God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wants to give ajr and he wants to give, you know, uh, good deeds for this for the man. So it's like unintentional sadaqah in a way. So this is good for him and good for you, if you think of it. It's good for both of you. But yeah, but uh, why uh, you can interpret, uh, interpret this <laughs> as uh, God wants me, wants to test my uh my my honest or my the honesty yeah i think if that happened to me i'll say listen god you know that i'm usually honest but i'm going to take this as a gift this <laughs> this time and maybe he'll make <laughs> maybe i'll make an exception for this situation i think to be honest it depends on on how uh depends on how expensive the item is right i mean if it's if it's a, a small item it's, you can just give it back but if it's uh you know if it's if it's a good and expensive item, I think you should just uh, enjoy Even your day. It's only an expensive, but you can't uh, rely on this opinion. You have to, you know, the other the the owner. Yeah. Maybe he, he consider it as uh, he considers uh, consider it as um, something valuable. Everything, even small one, he never. Maybe he's mean, <laughs> so he can't uh, rely on. If if he's if he's mean, this is a good lesson for him, so <laughs> yeah. so he can pay attention next time. But uh, yeah, this is an example of undercharge, overcharge, care. What about care? I think this we can do a lot here. Care. Okay. Uh, careless. Careless and. Careful. Careful. These are the common ones. Careful. Yeah. yeah. What about Mary? Marry. Uh, remarry. I think this is the only one, and I'm not sure, but I think that's the only one we can use here. Because they yeah. say remarry. Usually after uh, a man or a woman gets divorced, if they get yeah. married again, of course, they say, oh, he remarried, he remarried. Uh, success. Successful. Successful, I think is the best one. Yeah. Play. Mm. Overplay. Overplay? Maybe. I'm not sure about overplay. Replay, replay. Re replay. Replay is common, especially with electronics and videos. Replay, <laughs> correct. I think also playful, right? We say it for animals and yeah. children. Yeah, we can say the, 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 the little boy was very playful. He played a lot. Or, for example, for puppies and I think cats and animals, we say playful. Use. Useless. Useful, reuse. Useless, useful, reuse. Overuse. Overuse. Yeah, with use. Reuse. I think. Reuse. You can use it in different ways. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at uh, the summary. Maybe we have other ones we didn't see. Uh, let's see. Maybe we missed some of these. Let's take a look. Um, uh, ah, here they are. So all of them are in the same exercise. Okay, so we have underestimate, we have underpaid, undercharge, under we also have underuse. Hmm, we didn't think of that. I don't think it's a very common word. I, I don't think I, Yeah, it's, I haven't used it before, the word underused. It's an underused word. The word underused is an underused word. Maybe yeah. people don't use it enough. Uh, ah, we forgot about uh, attach. Uh, ah, no, reattach is in the is in the article. Sorry, it's in it's in the article itself. We repaid, repaid. We didn't say repaid. We said rewrite, recharge, remarry. We said it. Replay, reuse. I think the only one we did, let's let's underline the ones we didn't think of, so we can try to remember them. Uh, underpaid. I think we we uh, used it. Dinner repaid? Maybe yeah. I don't remember, but okay. Uh, the rest uh, and fucker theme, we did them. The other ones we did. Over optimistic is in the article. Overpaid, we did it. Oversleep, we did it. Overcharge, overuse, we did it. Okay, okay. 
hopeful, painful, careful, successful, useful, playful. We, we did all of these. Harmless, this was in the article. Painless, we did it. Ah, we forgot sleepless. I think, no, 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 you said sleepless, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah careless use. Okay, very nice. So we, we actually did all of them except underuse. We didn't do underuse. Okay, very nice. So we can go back safely. All right, so uh, you see the idea is, is not complicated. It's quite simple, but it's very, very useful if you understand how you can play with words just by putting a prefix and a suffix. This, this of course, expands, expands your vocabulary quite significantly, I think. Okay, number eight, think of an exciting or frightening experience that has happened to you or someone you know. Make notes on these things who the story is about, when and where it happened, how the story started, the main events of the story, what happened in the end. Hmm. Can you think of a, of a story, something that happened to you maybe, or someone you know, um, and, and something that's, you know, a little bit exciting or frightening. You mentioned, Noha, last time, the story of your husband losing his uh, phone and, and uh, at the beach and then, you know, stepping on a nail, you, you said, right? Yeah. I think that's a bit frightening if you ask me, especially the stepping on the nail part. It's a bit frightening, yeah. I think. Yeah. Mm. What about you, Brian? Can you think of a frightening or exciting story? Something that happened to you recently? Recently? Maybe not, like not so recently. Of... Uh, after completing the scuba diving course, mm -hmm. uh, we uh, we took uh, to go. Uh, the teacher told us, "Let's go next week to uh, diving." To where? So the next week to go di uh, to, for diving. diving. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. So we gathered. So the last, uh, the next week, uh, we gathered around. We did our plan how to dive, and we went. Uh, we have um, um, Mohammed. He's a, this, a student. Okay, one of the the diving students. He yeah, uh, he didn't care about the plan. So, and he was the team leader. Ooh. <laughs> Follow the blind so following to, the blind. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. The blind leading the blind. Yeah. Uh, we swim like two one kilometer. Uh, yeah. Underwater. The beach. Yeah. Uh, on the surface. Okay. That, uh, we didn't. You still didn't dive. Diving. So, yeah, everyone was tired. So. We started yelling at him, and we dive. Uh, when we dived, and we reached at the bottom, Shingulik, there was a bomb. There was a bomb underwater. Got in, uh, they got in. They that hasn't not, not that hadn't to... someone threw a bomb. Uh huh. You mean like uh, TNT? Gelatina. Gelatina is. I think it's TNT, right? No, no, gelatina. Yeah, no, but... it's not TNT. It's not. Kind uh, of uh, plastic explosives. Uh, and I can see some people in English. I think the gelatina is the plastic C4. Is it C4? Plastic explosives? Yeah, I never seen it actually. So I can't. Mm. Okay, I'm not sure what it is in English, but. And, and uh, did you leave it or pick it or, or run away or I mean swim away? What what happened? It was far. It was far, but the the sound and the the, the vibration. I think. Are, you mean it exploded while it, uh, it exploded? Right. It exploded while you were in the water. Yeah. You, oh, I thought I thought you actually saw the bomb, but it was you know just sitting in, in the water. Yeah, you, someone threw it. Yeah. While you were in the water. <laughs> so why why did it explode? Yeah, can't, it was really close. Wow, that's really scary. But who threw it? Do you know who threw it? Uh, uh, fishermen. Fishermen threw it, and they didn't Quantro, know you were. They yeah. didn't know you were there. 
Yeah, it was uh, close to us, but it wasn't, yani, it was like 200 meters be between us, but it was really... You, you felt the vibration and you felt everything. Mission vibrate, uh, yani, the, the, uh, something blows up in the water, it's not like in the air. Uh -huh. The... the Waves, you mean? The, the... Uh, so, yeah, the waves. The sound reaches uh, is faster uh, four times in the water than the air. Yeah, that's true. Yes. And the uh, waves. Uh, everyone was in. Yani, kuna. Yeah, You felt. You mean you felt the shock waves of the bomb underwater? Yeah, مش حتى في shock wave يعني كل واحد نطر في تركينا. Yeah, spree. Uh, you spread. Yeah, spread. So, yeah. so yeah. this means the force was. This means it's it was yeah. near. It, it was. Yeah. It was near. <laughs> yeah, twenty meter. Twenty meters not uh, far at all. Did Did anybody lose any fingers or ears or something? La 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 la. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's a. It's 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 scary but sort of funny when you <laughs> you listen. Yeah. To it. yeah. So you had the feeling of what the fish feels, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this, this is a good story, I think. Um, I, I don't know the point here of uh, this exercise, but I think maybe they want to tie it to, you know, uh, a dangerous experience similar to the one about sharks. And what's what I yeah. like about your story, Brain, it's also sort of related to underwater and, and dangers of the sea, dangers at sea. Or maybe dangerous under underwater they should call it and you can and we should list your story here how you were really? diving and someone threw uh bomb okay so i think we're done with this lesson there's nothing more here we can move on okay now here in this lesson i think the focus is of course this is a real world uh sort of exercise so we're focusing on more you know, more daily language or more sp spoken English, conversational kind of English. So the topic is warnings and advice. Warnings and advice. Let's start with the first question. It says here, have you ever been hiking or camping? And if so, where did you go? And if not, would you like to go? Mm, okay, let's start with, with no. Have you ever been hiking or, or camping? Maybe hiking in Burian Mountains. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I we think... Went to Japan, so there's a uh, huge mountains there. Uh, we had hike. We had a hike trip, yeah. Hiking trip. Uh, so, but, but did you spend a long time walking and hiking? I mean, around the mountain or not a very long... Was it a short hike? Uh, yeah, maybe two hours, yeah. Two hours is good. It's a good hike, two hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, Brahim, have you ever been hiking or camping? Camping, yeah. But remember, when we say camping, it's not the Libyan Zerda with a house and... Uh... No, no, I was with the scouts. Yeah, scouts is, I think that's camping, correct. Uh, okay, tell us a little bit about it. Where, where did you go and, and how was it? Khums. In Khums? How, how, yeah. for how, how many days did you camp? Or was it just one night? Three days. For three days? And and yeah. what, what did you do? What did you eat? What what activities did you participate in? Uh, for, uh, we as we remember we ate pakuka uh, basmana. Okay. Yeah. Um, we went. We didn't know the city, uh, so they told us to go to uh, Libda. Uh huh. Uh, and uh, we got lost. And, so we, uh, we should take right uh, the right way. We went left. And were were you on foot or were you? Were, was one of you driving? On foot. On foot. Yeah, on foot. But uh, how did yeah. you get back? How did you find your way? Uh, they told us to just go on foot. So after like two hours, we. <laughs> so you were at that point you were convinced that you're really lost yeah <laughs> okay 
No, right. Okay. For me, I don't, I don't think I've ever been hiking. Um, I mean, I, I, I like to walk sometimes uh, before I started with this uh, new English uh, courses, these pro these, this program. I used to sometimes go with a friend and, you know, just walk around the city. Sometimes we would walk 10 kilometers uh, in one night, we just go around Tripoli, just walking. But not in nature, you know, not in mountains. And I think it would be very interesting if, if I could try that someday. Um, okay, now the second question it asks, what problem do you think people can have if they're hiking or camping in the mountains? I think Ibrahim's example is excellent. Getting lost is probably number one, one of the main problems. What, what other problems do you think now? Uh, dehydration. Dehydration, very dangerous, especially if you're in a warm country yeah. like Libya and you don't have water, you'll, you can easily get dehydrated, very dangerous. Mm, okay, so uh, so dehydration, getting lost. What what other problems do you think people can face when they're hiking or camping? Uh, maybe, uh, dangerous animals. Maybe. maybe wild animals. Maybe. Yeah, animals, like snakes or scorpions. Snakes, scorpions, maybe wolves, wild dogs, something like that. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. What else do you think uh, other dangers or think other things that can go wrong? Food poisoning. Food poisoning. Yeah. If you, uh, by the way, Brian, how, uh, I mean, how did anybody get food poisoning when you went camping? Uh, I got dehydrated, so. Mm, but they, they don't give you water? That yeah, they did. Uh, can uh, mm. you mean you, 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 you don't take you didn't take enough when they were when they were dividing it you didn't take your share or how is it do they give each person uh, an equal number or does any everybody drink from the same la la you mean who who gets there first yeah, I mean... drinks the most yeah <laughs> okay all right, so that's a, that's a problem, I think. Okay, so you can see the theme yeah. here. I think the theme of, of at least the, the first listening track is about maybe camping, hiking, and, and what, could go, what could go wrong, because a lot could go wrong. Um, all right, so here it says, look at the photo, which of these things can you see? Okay, check new words and phrases with your teacher or in a dictionary. So we have a few new words, maybe not new, but I think we have words which are related specifically, uh, related to, uh, to camping and hiking, especially camping, I think. Okay, can, can you read some of these words, please? Yeah, Noha, can you read these words? Uh, a tent, <coughs> camping uh, stove, waterproof clothing, uh, a rock stack, <coughs> compass, sleeping bag, walking boots, spare batteries, a torch. Mm. All right. How many of these things, first of all, are, are, all, are these things clear? Are the words new or do you know all of these things? Uh, um, I think it's clear. Mm, okay. So uh, the same thing for you, Brian? snack, a camping stove. Camping stove. I think camping stove, do you know what, what the thing that you... Yeah, yeah the, the thing that you cook at, camping stove. Uh, this is what you use to cook. It's like a portable little gas, uh, you know. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Right? We, I think it's Italian, we use it. Stofa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the same in English, stove, it's the same word. But this is for camping, the small one that's, that's portable and you take it with you. Um, the rest are clear, right, Brian? A rock snack. Rock snack. A rock snack. Not rock snack. snack. This is the rucksack. You can see it in the photo. Can you see this? A sack. The sack itself, yes. 
يا 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 الرقصه سناك اه تمام 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 اي ثينك ميبي يو نيد تو هاف ا سناك ار يو هانجري براين يا سو So a rucksack, it's just, you know, it's what you take to, to put all of your camping stuff. The big uh, sack, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The big, the big sack. The big camping sack. Okay, how many things can you see in the photo? Uh, I've already found the rucksack. What else can you find from these words in the photo? Yeah, the sleeping bag. Yeah, there's uh, a sleeping walking. bag. Walking. Yeah. This is the, the walking bag. boots. Boots. Sleeping bag. Walking boots, yes. Waterproof uh, clothing. Uh, can you see waterproof clothing? The snack. Yeah. The snack. You mean sack? You mean? No, I can't see that. I think uh, I, the sleeping, sleeping bag. bag. Yeah, I think this is waterproof clothing near the sleeping bag. Uh, with tent. Where's the tent? Can you see the tent? Ah, we can see the Rebecca the sleeping bag. Yeah, yeah, the poles, the poles that we use to. Yeah, correct. You're right. So I think th this is the blue tent here. This is the tent. Uh, can you see a torch or batteries or a compass? No. I can't. No. Maybe they're in. The, maybe they're in the rucksack. Maybe. Okay, at least we yeah. found we found a number of items, which is good enough, I guess. Uh, okay, let's move on to the listening part. It says, uh, watch or listen to Lisa and Rebecca's conversation. Put these things in the order they talk about them. All right, so they're going to cover these eight points. Uh, these eight things, of course, they will talk about them. Our job is just to put them in order to say one, two, three, and, and so on. But it, there's also another note here. It says there are two things that they don't talk about. Hmm. This means in reality, they're going to talk about six things, not eight. So two of them are not going to be mentioned. All right, so let's go to the listening. Let's go to the track. Let's go there. Hmm. And we want track. Which track is it? Eight, uh, track 35, CD2, 35. Track 35. So, how can I help? Well, Daniel's asked me to go on a hiking holiday in the Lake District with him. Oh, right. That sounds fun. Uh, yes, maybe. Anyway, he wanted me to look at his old tent to see if it's still OK. Well, I wouldn't like to be on top of a mountain in that. If I were you, I'd buy a new tent. Yes, maybe you're right. You and Charlie have been hiking a few times, haven't you? Yes. We used to go quite a lot before Harry was born. Well, could you give me some advice? I've never been hiking before and I'm a bit nervous about it. Yes, of course. Well, firstly, make sure you take plenty of warm clothes. It can get really cold at night in a tent. OK. And it's a good idea to take some waterproof clothing in case it rains. Which it probably will. This is England, after all. Yes, Daniel's going to lend me his waterproof jacket. And I've already got a rucksack, a camping stove and a warm sleeping bag. Great. And make sure you wear comfortable walking boots. Don't wear new boots or else you'll get blisters on your feet. Yes, I've got some old boots that are very comfortable. OK, that's good. And what about food? What should we take? Well... Dried food and pasta is good, because it isn't very heavy to carry. You can camp by a river and use the water to cook with. OK, that's really useful, thanks. What else do you think we should take with us? Well, you'd better take a torch in case you have to walk in the dark. And you'll need it when you're camping too, of course. And take some spare batteries for your torch and your camera. That's a 
Good idea. I hadn't thought of that. And don't forget to take a map. It's easy to get lost in the mountains, particularly in bad weather. Right. And what should we do if we get lost? Well, you can try to use the GPS on your phone, but you can't always get reception, so it's worth taking a compass just in case. And whatever you do, don't lose sight of each other. If the weather is bad, you and Daniel must stay together at all times. Right. Thanks, that's really helpful. Oh, and be careful when you're crossing rivers. They can be more dangerous than they look. Yes, we will. Do you think it's a good idea to tell someone where we're going? <laughs> yes, definitely. And when you expect to get back. Then, if you're not back on time, someone can come and look for you. Right, that sounds like good advice. Oh, and one more thing. What's that? Watch out for wolves. There are quite a few in the Lake District, and you don't want one of those coming into your tent at night. Wolves? Are you serious? No, don't worry. <laughs> I'm only joking. The most dangerous thing in the mountains is always the weather. And Daniel's cooking, probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'd better go and pick up Harry from his grandparents. See you later. Thanks, Rebecca. See you. Bye. OK, so... Uh... Um, I think it's easier if we cross out the things they didn't talk about first, right? Yeah, the best mountains and hotels and... Yeah, I think hotels you're right. Yeah, they didn't talk about mountain, the best mountains and... They... And hotels and pops. Exactly, yeah, I, I think she, they didn't discuss that. All right, now for the other stuff, let's try to put it in, in order. So what's the first thing they talked about? Daniel's tent. Mm, okay. After that? Uh, what, to, what to wear. What to wear. What to uh, wear. Uh -huh. Then? Food to take. Uh, food to take. Okay. Getting lost. Uh-huh. Oh, crossing the river. river. Crossing the river. Dangerous animals. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I think they they covered these topics. All right, now in the second part of the question, um, I think we they want us to listen in more detail and make a list of all the things that Rebecca advises Lisa to take with her. On okay, I think we can do this without uh, without listening again. I think let's mm -hmm. think of the things that she told her that she should take. What can you remember? Uh, camping stove. Yes. Uh huh. Waterproof clothing. Waterproof clothing. Okay. Mm hmm. Uh, walking boots. Uh, yes. Waterproof clothing. Compass. Clothing. Torch. The, the stove. Uh, walking boots. Walking yeah, boots. Walking Especially if they're old. Uh, compass. Yeah. Uh, torch. Torch. Spare batteries. Spare batteries. Spare batteries, correct. Uh -huh. Sleeping bag. A warm sleeping bag, I think she said. Yeah. Warm clothes. She did say you should wear warm clothes, I think. But I think you don't take these things. You are wearing them already, right? It's not something you take. Um, what else did she mention? I think these are the only things she mentioned. Dry food, right? I think she said. Yeah. yeah. She said it's best if... She advised her to take pasta because it's, you know, it's not heavy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so dry food is the best. All right. Um, okay, now why did she, in part C, in part D, sorry, it says, why does Rebecca think Lisa should take each thing? Um, okay, why did she advise her to take all of these things for the, the for example, the camping stuff? To cook food. Okay, to cook. Um, the water, the waterproof clothes. Why did she advise her to take waterproof clothes? Because it's cold. It's cold. Yeah, yeah, to and get warm. Do we use waterproof clothes to get warm? No, to get warm and uh, uh, not being wet. Yeah, I think to stay dry. Right, this is the yeah, main goal. Because yeah, 
because it's my train, she said. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, she also advised her to, to use, she said, it's better to use uh, old walking boots. She said, don't, don't use uh, new walking boots. Do you remember? Uh, more comfortable because it's uh, kind of uh, more comfortable than the... That's true, because if, if you're using your old walking boots, it's yeah. maybe your feet are used to them. So, yeah, you... but I, she used the specific words, a specific word that something will happen to you if you use new boots. Can you remember what the word is? But I can't, forget, I can't remember. It starts with the letter B. She said, you'll get something on your feet if you write, if you use the new boots. Okay. Close, close. Blisters. 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 Have you heard of this word? Blisters? Blisters. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's it, that's it. That's a blister. Uh, a blister. And it's not only from shoes. You can even if even if you if you burn your finger, a small burn, if it's a small burn, you'll get a blister at the place of the burn. Or for example, if you're using, uh, you know, uh, if you use a, 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 a broom or a mop for a long time, you know, you might get blisters on, on your palms or if you're using weights, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are, those are blister. On, on your feet or on your hands, anywhere, they call it a blister, blister. Okay. All right, so we found out some information about uh, Rebecca and Lisa and what are the things that uh, Lisa is going to take and why she should take them. And I think we can move to the next part here. All right, now it says warnings and advice. We give warnings when we think something might be dangerous. Okay, so we're going to divide uh, uh, this into four different groups. So uh, the first group is for giving advice, asking for advice, giving warnings, responding to advice or warnings. Okay, so uh, let's check group A. Uh, Brahim, can you read these, these four questions, these four points? In Could you give A. me some advice? Mm -hmm. What else do you want to think we should take with us? Mm -hmm. Uh, what should we do if we got lost? Do you think it's a good idea to tell someone we are going, where we are going? All right. What do you think the best heading for this group of questions is? Um, advice. Do you think it's giving advice? Do you think it's responding to advice? Do you think it's asking for asking. advice? Or do you think it's giving warnings? Asking for advice. All right, so it's asking for advice. Okay, I agree. I think it's asking for advice. Okay, the next group, Noha, can you can you read these points, please? If I were you, I would buy a new tent. Tent. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you take plenty of warm clothes. Uh, it's a good idea to take some waterproof clothing in case it rains. Don't forget to take a map. It's worth taking a compass just in case you would bet, uh, just in case, okay. Uh, you would better take a torch in case you have to work in the, in the dark. Mm. Uh, giving advice. Yeah, this sounds like advice, correct, okay. And uh, group C here, what do you think, Brian? Can you read these? Uh, don't wear new boots or you will get uh, blisters. Uh, whatever uh, you do, don't lose sight on uh, of each other. Be careful when you are crossing rivers. Uh, watch out for the woods. Mm, what's this? Uh, so we, we gave advice. Uh, giving Some warnings. Uh -huh. Yes. I agree. I think this is how you should give warnings, correct? And the last one, the last one means this is... Responding to advice or warnings. Yeah, it's, we, that's the only one left. 
uh, responding to advice and, and warnings. Let's check how you can respond to someone's warnings or advice. Uh, it's mainly just saying thank you in a way. That's really useful. Thanks, that's a good idea. I hadn't thought of that. Right, thanks, that's really helpful. That sounds like good advice. Okay, so you're just thanking the person, basically. All right, now in part B, I think they want us to pay attention to the, to the form. It says, look at the uh, underlined verb forms in, in number three A. Hmm. Okay, so we have a group of words which are underlined. By by we have to take, uh, to taking, take, to take, taking, take, and we have don't, don't lose. lose. Mm. So it says here complete these verbs with imperative, infinitive, verb ing, or infinitive with two. Okay, so depending on depending on the the, the phrase that precedes the verb, the verb will change form. Okay. So uh, it says here, if you use the phrase, if I were you, do you see how they use this? Where? We talked about this last time when we did uh, the second conditional, if you remember. Remember when I told you in the second conditional, you have the option of using uh, if I were you or if I was, uh, you know, the, the was and where. I think we talked about it. Do you remember, Naha? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you can see here that they used were with I, if I were you. Mm -hmm. um, so this is actually the, 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 common, the common one uh, that they use. The other one, which is if I was you is actually, they don't use it as, as, as much as this one, if I were you. Anyways, so if I were you, I'd, hmm, what do we use here? What verb form? Let's take a look. I, I would take. I would take. So this means infinitive. Do we use infinitive. Infinitive. Without anything, just directly okay. use an infinitive. And of course, the reason is because would is a modal verb, right? And modal yeah. verbs, they behave in, in a similar way. Okay. The other one, you'd better. Hmm, let's check you'd better and let's see what they used with it. You would better to take. Is it to take or take? Mm, you would better take take is yeah so so here they also used uh they also used an infinitive with the with the mm -hmm. phrase you'd better so if you want to use you'd better use an infinitive all right what about it's a good idea two plus infinitive yeah i think two plus infinitive let's confirm this from the example don't forget, uh-huh, there you see. Don't forget to take a map. Don't forget to. So this means we use to infinitive with, uh, with it's a good idea, to plus infinitive. Now, uh, what about don't forget? Uh, to take. To take, it's the same. Yeah. yeah. Two plus infinitive. We have it's worth. Mm, let's Doing check. Taking. Oh, we're taking. Taking. Now we need a verb plus ing this time. Yeah. Okay, so this is taking. our first. Yeah, taking, exactly. And taking is verb plus ing. All right. Whatever you do, Don't get don't lose. So it's you know we use a negative and infinitive. Yeah. Don't lose. Don't stay. Don't forget. Don't. So whatever you do, don't something. Plus infinitive. Hmm. All right. So uh, let's let's. Uh, I don't think we need to to do the listening part, but let's very quickly check if there are any tips regarding these expressions, because they're, I think they're quite useful. Let me very quickly check if there are any tips worth checking. Warnings and advice. Okay, what does it say here? 
Responding. Uh -huh. Let's check the tips at the bottom. Um, nothing new. I think just the answers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can go back. I thought there might be tips. There's nothing. We can go back. All right. Now the listening, I don't think we need to listen to them again. Uh, they're sort of obvious, they're clear. We can go to number five. Okay, now this part is more interesting. Here, we want to choose the correct word or the correct phrases in these sentences. And uh, I think it might be better if we show both pages together. Uh, what is it? It's this. Advice countable or not? Uncountable. Uncountable advice, huh? Yes. You can, if you want to make it countable, if you want to use a unit or, you know, like a container for advice, piece of advice. Piece of advice, yeah. Yeah, let me give you a piece of advice. But usually they just say, let me give you some advice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They just use some. Um, okay, let me find the two page uh, thingy. Where is it? All right, so here we can we can check this way if you need. Uh, all right. Okay, so let's start. So we're going to have a conversation between Mia and Jack. Would you like a minute first to check, to prepare your answers, or do you want to start right away? Mm, no, you. We have. I. I. I need. Some time to check. Take, take a minute, yeah, take some time. And you can, okay. always, go, you can always go back to number three to, to check uh, what they're using, what expression. Okay, same thing for you, Brian, okay? Brian, are you there? Hey, hey, hey. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, take some time. Okay, just give me a minute. I'll, I'll be back, just a second.
Hello. There you are. Uh, said Sri Vijay. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, hello. 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 Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Let's let's check your answers. Okay. So Mia, you can start first. Who's Mia? You're Mia. Okay. Uh, I'm going sailing with some friends next weekend. Could you give me some advice? Uh, when is that? You're Zach, yes. Unless you want to be Mia. Lala, Lala. Okay. Uh, well, uh, make sure you always hold on, in, uh, hold into something. And uh, you will better uh, uh, wear a life jacket in, uh, in case you fall in. Yes, that sounds like a good idea, good advice. Uh, what do you think I should take with me? Well, it's worth uh, taking some sunscreen uh, just in case. You can get uh, very burnt on boats without realizing it. That's a good idea. I haven't thought of that. And what should we do in case the weather changes? If I were you, I will come back in immediately. Better safe, safe than sorry. Oh, and uh, watch out from uh, other boats or ferries. Is it uh, from or is it for? From, uh, for. What do you think, Brian? For or from? Number four. Four? four? Yeah. OK. Right, thanks. That's really helpful. OK. OK. Uh, let's try it one last time, but the other way around, uh, just to, to see the other expressions. Uh, could you start this time, Brian? You could be Mia and Noah could be, could be Zach. I'm going sailing with some friends next weekend. Could you uh, give me some advice? Well, make sure you always hold on to something and you would better wear you would better wear a light jacket in case you you fall in. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, that sounds uh, like a good advice. What should I? What uh, What do you think I should uh, take uh, with me? Well, it's worth taking. It's it's uh, worth. Taking some sun cream, just in case you can get very burnt on boats without realizing it. Uh, that's a good idea. I haven't uh, thought about uh, thought of it. Uh, and uh, what should we do in case uh, the weather changes? If I wear you. I would come back in. I would come back in immediately. Better say than sorry. Oh, and watch out for other boats or ferries. Uh, right. Thanks. Uh, that's really helpful. Okay. Okay. So uh, you know, it's just an exercise here on how to use these expressions. Uh, okay, let me return that the page to the single, where is it? Okay. Uh, now, let's move on to number six here. It says, look at this advice for people visit visiting the UK, fill in the gaps uh, with these words and phrases. Mm, all right. Okay, so uh, the first tip or the first advice is, don't forget to book your hotels uh, before you travel. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the next advice here? You take warm clothes. 
and make sure. Okay, let's try it. Let's try make sure. Mm, make what sure about number? What about number three, Brian? Uh, don't drive when number you're stupid. Uh, whatever you do, let's try it. Could be right. And the next one, uh, no. Create a ticket in advance. Um, uh, let's cross out the words that we use, the expressions that we use. Hmm. What do you think here? We have infinitive to book. Two with infinitive. What do you think the best expression is now? Uh, it's a good idea too. It's a good idea too. Okay, let's use it. Mm, number five, Brian? Don't. Okay. Number six now. Be careful. Okay. And what about number seven, Brian? If I were you, I would. Okay. And the last one. Mm. It's work. It's work. Mm -hmm. So it's worth. It's worth taking an umbrella, an umbrella just in case. Mm. Okay, let's see if there's a right five one. Okay, what do you think of this advice? Uh, what do you think is the most important tip for, for the UK, in your opinion? What's your, what's your idea? Which one do you prefer? You uh, can... Uh, sit there. Six. Number six, okay. Yeah, and uh, seven, two, three, two, two. Uh, okay, why, why did you prefer these? What do you think is because, this? Mm -hmm. uh, I went to Glasgow. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. So it was really cold, mm -hmm. and I always forgot the the umbrella, the cars, yeah. the cars. How they they come from the opposite side. Yeah, my uncle lives there, so when he's driving, I was in the driving seat, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, was really. Weird. Yeah. Did you, did tell me? Did you understand anything they said? When uh, the, when uh, they talked. At that time, uh, in that time, I can't understand English. Ah, you, you couldn't understand English, anyways. <laughs> okay. Even if you did, yeah, it was, so even if you did, shocked. even if you did, it wouldn't have made much difference <laughs> because they have a very strong accent in Glasgow. Very very hard to understand. They call it Glaswegian, Glaswegian English. It's very, it's a very thick Scottish accent. It's very hard. Okay. All right, okay. Uh, what about you now? What do you think is 
the most, most logical advice here, if you had to choose the best two from this list? Uh, maybe uh, make sure to take some warm clothes if you're gonna uh, go to to UK in winter. Mm -hmm. Winter, and um, uh, okay, maybe uh, number three because it seems it seems. Uh, as if it's uh, traffic there. Yes, there's, and also if you see, it's like a warning. They're telling yeah. you to try to avoid it. It's not a good idea. You'll hate your trip if you do this, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, maybe don't spend all your time in London. There's so much to see. In UK, like a countryside or... Yeah, maybe other cities, other, you know, stuff. Okay, okay. So it's a general advice for anybody who's interested in going to the UK. All right, now, let's check here, number seven. It says, write five warnings or pieces of advice for people visiting your country. This is very easy, I think, given, yeah. <laughs> given our situation now. <laughs> this is probably the most logical exercise until now. It's very, very relevant to our situation. So yeah. I think it's very easy to do. So let's yeah. let, let's think of something. And OK, I'm going to leave your answers uh, because maybe we can use uh, the same model. Uh, OK, so there are two. I don't think we can use that. OK, but yeah, we can use them. So we want to write similar a similar list to this one. Uh, this way, at least we don't waste too much time. Now, let's make it for Libya. So let's say a visitor is coming to Libya. So uh, no <laughs> this is the... <laughs> There's better places to go than Libya. Yeah, let's say this person is insisting on coming on Libya, or maybe he works for, you know, he works for some kind of intelligence agency or whatever. So he's coming anyways. But uh, we want to give this person some advice and warnings. So if I wanted to make like a big warning for a foreigner in Libya, uh, and if I want to start with whatever you do, don't. Mm, don't uh, get on a, a bus, public transportation. Uh, they're careless. They're very careless, yeah. yeah. Mm, okay, can you think of something even worse than public transportation for a foreigner? Uh, What's the worst thing a foreigner can do in Libya? The worst thing he can do or the worst thing that can happen to him? Uh, maybe... Uh, don't uh, use a bike because uh, we don't have... Uh, uh, light, yeah. not mm, I like this advice. Uh, watch the road. Yeah. No, here, watch but uh, the street. Yeah, nobody cares about the uh, the traffic lights. Uh, okay, okay. Maybe you can do this as, uh, for example, uh, be careful when Word. driving. Be when careful you see when... the, the sign, the key sign. Be careful <laughs> because it's not really true in Libya. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you mean the V sign like like uh, victory the V sign? No, no, the green sign. Traffic the green, light. the green light. You're talking about the, yeah, green, the green light. light. It's not yeah. true in Libya. It's it's not your your turn now. It's yeah. then the other side who who, who, still, who have red. Hey, la, and uh, yeah, when you're crossing the road, look uh, left and right and behind you because <laughs> someone maybe. Uh, Driving on the and and above you, maybe a, yeah, the pavement. Someone is driving on yeah. the pavement. Yeah, okay. This this is good. Let's write some of this. So if I want to use the very strong warning here, whatever you do, don't ride a bike. Uh, whatever you do, don't ride a bike on the street or on the roads. On the road, on the street. In the street is better than on. In the street with cars. 
because they just were not used to just like nice it. Ah, the one about crossing the road. Well, how, how can we put this advice, right? It's a good idea. Maybe you can use it's a good idea, right? It's a yeah. good, it's a good idea to look, look right everywhere, left and behind you and behind you when crossing the road. Also sounds very logical. Okay, another important tip for a foreigner visiting Libya. What else can we tell him or her? Mm. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, warning, uh, good idea or not. Uh, when driving, when you are driving a car, uh, don't wear seat belts because police will pull you over. Okay, so don't wear wear uh, a seat belt a seat belt when driving the police might pull you over driving the police might pull you over okay last advice Okay, can we use an advice with, if I were you, let's use this. It's a nice way to start advice. If I were you, I'd infinitive. Hmm. Uh, I would rent a flat rather than uh, walking in at a hotel or something. Okay, this is yeah. kind of good advice, especially for someone staying for a, a while. If I were you, I'd yeah. rent, I'd rent a flat instead, uh, instead of staying in a hotel. Hmm. This is good advice. All right, so this is nice. Uh, it's just a, a way of using the different ways to make uh, uh, warnings and advice. Uh, I think we can move on. All right, so here, let's check. No, we have pronunciation. Okay, so we don't have, uh, we don't have weakened and uh, strong forms and that boring stuff, but this is good because here we have three different three different sort of vowel sounds. I think they call these diphthongs, not vowels, because they're, they're a combination of both. Okay, so it says, listen and notice three ways we say the letters E-A-R. So this part, E-A-R, is actually pronounced in three different ways. Okay, mm -hmm. in the first list, uh, uh, Noah, can you read the, the first group in group number one here? Uh, e, ear. Beard disappear. Okay, what about the second one? No. Wear, bear, hair. Uh -huh. And the last one? Earthquake, Earth. learn, search. Uh, do you think number two and three, are they the same or are they different in your opinion? Different, different. They're a bit different, right? Yeah. Okay. So now learn search. Yeah, they're they're a bit different from where, bear, pair, learn. Mm -hmm. It's a little longer, I think, the one with learn. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it says here, do we usually say the letter R in the words here? In these words, do we pronounce the letter R? If it's British English, I mean, do we do we pronounce the letter R or not? Not all uh, times. I don't know. Hmm. OK, let's listen to them and let's find out. Let's find if we pronounce them or not. Track 36. Uh, 37. Could you? Track 37. One. Ear. Ear. Beard. Disappear. T. 
to. Air. Where. Bear. Pair. Three. Uh. Earthquake. Learn. Search. Mm. So what do you think of the letter R now? So. Uh, it's silent, but it's somehow. Yeah, but it's, it's more silent here in, in these examples. And um, not not clear R R, but uh, you can't even say such. They do they don't say such, for example. Search. 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 Yeah. yeah. Learn. Earthquake. Bear. 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 They Bear. they change the way they Sophia. they pronounce it. They pronounce pronouncing it pronoun. Sing it. Yeah, it's very light, but it's in, I think, I think here, if we want to answer the question in a very simple way, do we usually say the letter R in these, in, in the words? I think we don't really say them. They're, they exist, of course, they're there, but, you know, they're not very clear. It's not like, uh, it's not like when they use, uh, when there's linking. Remember when we talked about consonant vowel linking. So, for example, in the thought, for and then I'm at school, uh, we, we are omitting the R. So you have to pronounce it like E. Like in what his thought, Mazel Mustamur Shwaya, her in the Hua Mish. Yes, maybe. Yeah. But it, uh, the, the, I think the point it's not pronounced like R. R, R, clearly R. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Yeah. 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 All right, now in the box here, number two. We want to sort of group the words depending on the, 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 the sound. So if it's from the, the same sound as ear, beer, disappear, we're going to give them number one. If it's from where, bear, pair, we're going to give number two. If it's from earthquake, learn, search, we're going to give them three. All right. So the first one, the first word is number one. What about the second word? Do you think it's, yeah. what do you think? Is it is it one. number two or is it number three? Three. Okay. Early. Early. Uh. Mm. Mm. Okay. The next word. Good. Three. Okay. What about the one after it? Nightmare. Night. Mare. Nightmare. Two. Two, maybe. Two. Next one. Air. Air. Ear. 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 Number one. Okay, next one. Near. 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 One. Uh, 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 where? Yeah, uh, two, 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 two. I mean, good two. Which one? Well, the... Is it is it near or is it near? Near number one. Mm. Number one. Near. Okay. Next word. Uh, knee. Okay. Software. Next one. Fear. Uh, one. Bear, search, spare. Bear, pair. Let's say two. And the next word? Hear, heard, tlata. All right. Hear, beer, bear. No, be it. Uh, one. Okay. There. Learn. Earth. Wait. There's. Where. There. And can clap that. Maybe three. Mm. 
Murder. Murder. Three. Volunteer. One. Mm -hmm. Turn. Turn. Akita three. Now we have the two magic. Okay. Engineer. 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 One. Mm -hmm. Fair. Mm, two. Uh, two. Uh -huh. Two. Fair. Uh, further. Further. Uh, three. Okay. Cheer. 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 Uh, cheerful. Cheerful. One. Okay. Hair. Uh, two. And the last one? Burglar. Burglar. Three. Hmm. Okay. That's, <laughs> it's very tricky, right? It's not an easy yeah. exercise. <laughs> yeah, especially two and three. Yeah. Yeah. One, I think it's easy to get them, but two and mm. three, not, not as mm. obvious as you think. Okay, let's check. Track 38. One. Here. Here. Near. Fear. Beer. Volunteer, engineer, cheer. Okay, so Two. number one are correct. Air, scared, mm -mm. nightmare, software, spare. Stairs. Mm -hmm. Fair. Mm -hmm. Hair. Three. Er. Early. Earn. Heard. Murder. Turn. Further, burglar. Okay, so not bad. No, that's quite good. You only have uh, just one, two. Three. And three, three are incorrect, right? Yeah. Yeah, which is very good, I think, because the difference between two and three is, you know, it's a little tricky. The difference between where, bear, pair, and earthquake, learn, search, it's a little, it's not very obvious. All right, all right. So, so this is good. This is very good. All right, this one is easier, much easier, number three. Just, you know, just the one that's different, the odd one out. Uh, let's circle it. Let's remove the odd one out. So we have a brain, your, your turn. The last one, Noah did it, so you'll do this one. So read number two and tell me which word is is the odd one out. Beer, beer. Nafs and tal, bakri tal, shamal. It's the same. Beer. Shwa sound with a la. No, no. There, there's no shwa oh, here. No, no. Beer. Uh, beer. Murder. Beer. Which uh, one is different? Okay. Okay, number three. Search, peer, stairs. This is not peer. This is uh, pair. Pair, just pair. Pair. Mm -hmm. uh, search, pair, stairs. Search. Okay. Here, he, here. Further. Yeah. Further. Mm, can you say it again? 
here, here. How do you pronounce this? What's the past of here? Here. Yes, that's it. Here, here, further. Heard. Heard. It's not here. It's heard. Heard yeah. uh, further. Here, heard further. Further. Do you think maybe here, here, the the old here, here, heard, and further. يعني long. زي صوت ال a في الاثنين الثانيات. That's right. Here, صوت متحى e, long e. Yeah, yeah, right, Brian. If you notice it here, the other two are similar to each other, they're closer. Heard further. Uh, 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 e, e, uh, uh. Do you get the idea? Uh -huh. Yeah, so here is actually the, the weird one here, it's the odd one. Okay, what about number five? Disappear, fear, beer. No, this is bear. Dub bear, bear, a eh, bear. Uh, a bear. Mm -hmm. Where earthquake turn? Where earthquake turn? March. Mm. Where? Naya. Where for the group Tani? Uh -huh. Oh, earthquake. Earth, like yeah. where? Here's a, a, a. Yeah. Uh, this where is like chair. Where? Chair, stairs. A, a kind of sound. But the other one is uh, earthquake. Tur, turn. Uh, fur, uh -huh. Further. Heard. Um, uh, group talent. Agrab lil a. Mftuha akta. Ah. لكن هذيك اللي هي where stare زي حرف ال a في الالفابيت اكثر. What about number seven? Nightmare scared ear. Ear. Yeah, correct. The ear اللي هي من group one صح. Mm -hmm. Engineer early cheer. Uh, early. Right, that's it. All right, so, you know, it's just pronunciation practice, uh, getting different sounds. Okay, let's check our next topic. Of course, we won't finish it today, but, you know, let's just have a look at it. Ah, we have relative clauses, super important for writing, relative clauses. Okay, this is a nice lesson. It's about health, get healthy. Okay, let's do the, at least let's do the speaking part here. Um, okay, let's start with the brain. This is this is a good question, maybe. <laughs> Do you think you have a healthy diet, Brian? No. No. Why not? Why don't you have a healthy diet? Um, because it's. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, when someone يعني, gets in the diet, يعني, the family is in the diet, and 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 the family is in So there isn't much, there isn't a healthy diet here, right? Because food is yeah. available all, all the time. Yeah. Okay, okay. And how, how often do you think, how often do you eat things that you know are bad for you? For example, give me an example. Uh, give me, you know, uh, something that you think is bad for you. Or at least something you, th you know that's bad for you and that you eat it at home. Uh, good, good okay, uh, so you can say smoothies, okay. smoothies or slushies, right? Hey. Okay, and how often do you have these? How often do you drink them? I can have these addiction, you know. But do you have do you okay. have do you have a machine at home? No. Uh huh. So you, you go out and buy them. Yeah, took a lot of them until I got sick from them. Ooh, 
how, how many did you have per day? Yeah, three per day. Four, per, four per day. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's a little that's a little craziest. Mm, okay. And has your has your diet changed since you were a child? Do you think there was a, is a, is there a change? I mean, is there something that you eat now you didn't eat before, or maybe the other way around, or maybe that the is other way around. The other way around. Give us an yeah. example. Uh, fish, Simkin. Fish. What about fish? Yeah. Uh, did you, did... When I was a kid, I don't didn't like uh, fish. And now? Yes, uh, I like them. You like fish now? Mm. Yeah, because I thought why uh, if tuna was a fish, then what? And you what like I'm tuna? Doing? You like tuna? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, okay, I see what you mean. All right. Okay, okay. What about you now? Do you think you have a, a healthy diet? Uh, not completely healthy, but I'm trying to pursue something like this. Mm. Healthy diet and uh, such, a, such a things. Okay. And why do you think your diet is not completely healthy right now? What's, what's in your diet that you think is not healthy right now? Uh, well, because in, uh, uh, in our country, uh, the, I'm, uh, I'm a bit vegetarian, not mm. uh, 100%, not... Uh, yeah, I'm kind of vegetarian. So uh, vegetables in our country usually tend to be uh, more seasonal than you can find find uh, fresh vegetables and good that I like uh, in whole day year. Mm. <laughs> true, that's so, true. In such a time like in autumn and. Uh, and for example, uh, in the summer, um, it's about less, uh, uh, attract, attract me less than in winter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so you... And, um, also, because uh, I think healthy diet is vegetarian one. And uh -huh. you can eat, uh, you can, you can be kind of uh, meat eater, but um, in uh, you ought, uh, uh, you ought to, uh, to 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 be carnivore in sometimes, in some occasions, and from time to time, not yes. as our uh, Libyan uh, diet, mm -hmm. we were, we usually uh, carnivore. We, we are considered as uh, carnivores, not uh, vegetarian diet like Mexican, like uh, China mm -hmm. do. We, we depend uh, on meat mainly in yeah. our diet. So when you, we don't have the recipe that uh, can replace the diet and also it would be delicious. So I can and eat it myself and serve it for my other family members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a this is a big problem. I agree with you. Yes, there aren't yeah. many many good vegetable dishes. Yeah, vegetarian dishes, especially for for kids. They usually don't like vegetables mm -hmm. and uh, like crisps and uh, uh, even meat, uh, baked meat or grilled or. Mm -hmm. So, I haven't uh, any other solutions to replace the, 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 uh, the, our diet with another much healthier. Mm. I think maybe you'll, you'll have to learn some recipes, I think. It's the only thing. Maybe. 
Uh, yeah, there's, but but you you can find the the good products for these mm. recipes. Yeah, like that's... you uh, uh, want to use or um, uh, apply, um, for um, Mexican recipes. You you won't find the ingredients. Mm -hmm. Probably yeah. ingredients. The problem with ingredients again, yeah. Yeah. Mm, okay, it's an interesting point about uh, vegetarianism. There is uh, there is lots of uh, you know, late lately in the news. There's also the the you know the, the the fasting, the intermittent fasting. Have you read about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's also becoming yeah, quite good, popular. But, yeah. yeah, but. Uh, no, that's religious. Uh, no, اليوم نفسه. الساعات اللي هو النظام التجويع أو نظام. ال... يعني تأكل مثلاً ثمانية ب ب ب اتناش أو ثمانية بستاش. So يعني eight hours. يعني الوجبات متعك الجسم يتعود على الجوع بطريقة أوتوماتيكية يعني زي تخدع الجسم. It's a little bit tend to be a regime to to lose. To lose weight. Yeah, to lose weight rather than uh, diet. A diet. Mm -hmm. diet. Something oh, that you stick to. My time diet. Yeah. You can't stick to. Yeah, yeah. You can't stick to. You can't stick to it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is a very interesting lesson you can see because this is what they're focusing on. They're focusing on fasting. They're focusing on toxins. You know, healthy food. It's a nice topic, I guess. So we can start this one. I have a question. Tomorrow, uh, can you study tomorrow or Friday is not? What about you, Noha? Because I think I think maybe once you you mentioned that it's a family day and you usually you're usually busy on Friday. Once mentioned. Uh, at uh, what time? Um, it might be like this time, maybe four to six, or maybe even four to five. We don't have to do a full two hours if you can't. But uh, it, it'll, be, it'll be before six. Maybe it's either before six or after seven. Eight to, uh, eight to 10. Maybe eight to 10, if you're available. Yeah, I think it's, uh, for me, it's, seven. it's convenient for me. Eight to 10 is convenient, Brian? Man, you know, I'm in bad conversation, uh, I suppose. Uh, yes, yes, not exactly right after it, but you know, maybe half an hour break and, and we start again because you finish your conversation at eight. Ah, bizarre, man. Eight, yeah. that all, yeah. bizarre. So you finish that, mm. you, you finish conversation and you start again. Yeah. All right. It, it'll be a little uh, heavy for you, Brian, but that's good to get you talking. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I'll confirm with you, but for me, I prefer to, you know, catch up. Uh, all right? Okay. Okay, so I'll see you. you have to yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'll, I'll send them tonight, inshallah, I promise. Inshallah. Okay, then. Thank you for your time. I'll see you uh, tomorrow, inshallah. Have, uh, have a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.